Good Friday morning. The eclipse is then less than a week away, and we've got all the information you need to stay prepared. And one famous amusement park is going bigger and being better. And our Cardinal Weather sports team takes a swing at one Ball State Club sport. Get the coffee ready and open up those eyes. You're waking up with Cardinal Weather. From Ball State Unified Media, you're waking up with Cardinal Weather. Live from the Ball State Weather Center. Good Friday morning to you. You're waking up with Cardinal Weather. I'm Daniel Hockstuller. And I'm Jack Van Meter. Daniel, it's lovely, lovely to be here it's with you It's lovely to be here today. It's, it's gonna great. Be, it's going to be a great day. This is a little different for me. It is a little bit. Yeah. This is the first time on the desk for you, isn't first it? First time on the desk this semester. Oh, it's, it's my tradition. I do it once a semester. Once a semester. you gotta, you got to learn your skills, you know? Yeah, once, once a semester. And with that, with a total of $1.1 million <laughs> and over 7,000 gifts Wednesday night and a, yet another one-year Ball State day a 24-hour event dedicated to helping all programs in the university. That's true, yeah. yeah. Such contributions play a crucial role in providing opportunities and support for students, enabling them to excel in their academic pursuits and beyond. Ball State Student Media raised just under $7,000 from 93 gifts. From all of us at NewsLink Indiana and our partners at the Ball State Daily News, Bite and Ball Bearings, thank you. Your gifts will make an impact on students' lives and empower them to make a positive change within our community and beyond. Absolutely. It will be the longest, most visible solar eclipse in more than a century on April 8th. The moon will block out the sun, but watching this without proper protection can lead to eye damage, even permanent vision loss. In today's Health Minute, Mandy Gaither talks to an ophthalmologist about what you can do right now to keep your eyes safe next week. Remember the total solar eclipse in 2017? Well, the one coming up on April 8th will be longer and the last to be visible from the continental U.S. until the year 2044. Just like the last one, protecting your eyes is critical. It is not enough just to wear regular old sunglasses for these eclipses. Ophthalmologist Dr. Nicole Bayich with Cleveland Clinic says looking at a solar eclipse without proper eye protection can lead to solar retinopathy. That's damage to your retina. It can cause blind spots in vision and decreased vision. Depending on the extent of damage, it can be temporary or permanent. So you need to wear proper eclipse glasses with the solar filter ISO 12312-2. You'll find that printed on the inside of the Eclipse glasses. Unfortunately, there are counterfeit glasses out there. Before buying a pair, NASA recommends checking the American Astronomical Society's list of approved solar viewers, making sure the seller is listed on the website. After buying glasses, check them. There should be no scratches or tears. And if looking at the eclipse through binoculars, a camera or telescope, a certified solar filter on the front of the instrument is needed to protect eyes. And it's not enough to just put, you know, eclipse glasses over. And in fact, that's actually dangerous because if you put eclipse glasses over a telescope or you know, some other device, you can actually burn a hole through the glasses and lead to direct injury. For Health Minute, I'm Andy Gaither. Man, just looking at that footage just makes me look, feel excited oh, for yeah. the eclipse. There are also other ways to safely view the solar eclipse. NASA has directions on how to make a pinhole projector on its website. The agency says there's also an indirect viewing method, which does not involve looking directly at the sun. This me method projects the sunlight onto another surface by using materials around your house or even your hands. Yesterday, University Police sent an email to students outlining campus safety on the day of the eclipse. The email covered various toppings from park it, or parking to designated viewing areas. According to the email, traffic congestion is expected immediately following the eclipse. The email also says some patients will be needed on April 8th, that is Monday. The University Police Department is also advising to expect cellular disruption. This is due to an increase of visitors within the area. The email advises students, faculty, and staff to go to certain locations such as the Quad, University Green, and the Brown Family Amphitheater along with La Follette Field to experience the eclipse. Gosh, man! Can you believe that it's like it's what three days away? It's three days away, and it's been like year, uh, like a long time since the last. Well, one, it, was, right? it was 2017 since the last time. But let's right. go ahead and send it over to Ryan Hill to kind of take a first look at weather. 
And I tell you that future's <laughs> bright. Well, as long as you wear these anyway. Uh, be careful with those eyes. The future is bright in my full forecast. I'll, t I'll get to that eclipse forecast a little later on, but take a look at these uh, sky conditions and you'll see we have a bit of showers in the area and some clouds that held in some warmth, but that's going to hold in. That's going to hold back those temperatures. We're going to get up to the middle 40s. That's a little bit of an improvement from yesterday, but I got to tell you moving along through this forecast. I've got more clearing, but freeze for a moment. Winter has one more little thing. Freeze warning. I'm going to talk about that before your eclipse forecast. All that more coming up next. Jack. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ryan. And be sure to join our NewsLink Indiana weather team on this upcoming Monday for a special team coverage show, the 2024 countdown to the eclipse. The countdown begins at 2 p.m. on our NewsLink Indiana Facebook and YouTube pages. Our very own Oliver Moster, Hope Kleitch, and yours truly, unfortunately, will give you an in-depth look at stories about local people who have been preparing for this once-in-a-lifetime event. Again, oh... Are you, are you looking forward to the stream that's going to happen? Oh, yeah, of course I am. You look good on there. I do. Well, you, I, I did have some work done, you uh, know, so. True. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, you know. <laughs> Coming up, find out how Disney is taking a big step towards expansion. <laughs> but that's right after your weather now. Uh, welcome back. Disney is revealing some new details about a $60 billion expansion. A Walt Disney Worksite official says the project will include a new 14-acre area within the Magic Kingdom. He called it the largest expansion ever for the park, but he didn't announce any themes, designs, or when it will open. Disney's $60 billion expansion also includes projects in other parks and cruises over the next decade. Disney's plans comes as competitor Universal Orlando Resort prepares to open a third theme park next year. Yeah, and Disney Plus, speaking of, is cracking down on password sharing. Uh, the streaming platform will start to curb password sharing in June and in some countries, and more broadly, though, in September. It's part of Disney's efforts to boost signups and revenue as the streaming service continues to lose money. CEO Bob Iger pointed to the jump in signups its rival Netflix has seen since its recent crackdown on password sharing. According to data from Antana, the subscription media company, Netflix added 100,000 new accounts in the two days after its crackdown went into effect. Iger called Netflix the gold standard in streaming and said he hopes a similar boost could help move the company's streaming platform towards profitability. <sighs> I'm not going to lie, that kind of that stinks a little bit. It does. I mean, I love Disney and stuff. Yeah. And it's, it's a great time. It's magical, you it, know? It is magical. I'm a big fan, of, of course, of the Beatles, um, and they've got their big documentary on Disney+, Plus. so I always hold on to that just so I can watch Absolutely. that. Absolutely. And you know what, you know what uh, Disney says? It's a small world after all. Yeah. It looks like they're expanding a little bit. Well, yeah, they're expanding. Bit, so it's going to be a yeah. bigger world. But you know what? Let's go ahead and expand and broaden our horizons. Take a look at National Weather with Olivia Smithers. Thanks guys. So taking a look at the nation, we can see some cooler temperatures overall, 40 degrees in Muncie for now, 33 degrees in Minneapolis, 40, 57 down in Dallas, Fort Worth. Uh, we are going to warm up quite a bit down south, 86 degrees for the high, not, cool, not warming up much though in the northwest and northeast portions of the nation. Um, the radar is mostly dry for today. We're sitting under this high pressure system and so we aren't going to see much precipitation. Out to the west we can see through the um, Great Plains some, um, some energy out there as well as some um, 
freezing, snowier temperatures in the New England regions of the um, nation. For the jet stream, we can see this cooler air pushing down from the north, bringing in that cooler air. And Texas here, we can see this um, temperature, this wind gradient that's going to bring some high winds to that area. So they are currently in this fire warning for this region, along with the warmer temperatures. Um, taking a closer look at that, we can see the whole Four Corners region is sitting in these drought conditions with this um, drier air mass. And for the Midwest, we can see some freezing temperatures. So there's this stark difference here. Um, it has to do with this kind of system coming through and bringing um, some flooding to some areas and some cooler temperatures and then some hot, um, dry temperatures to other areas. So the um, Arizona and New Mexico, Texas, that whole region is sitting in that dry, warm portion of this system. Um, for going into the next, um, the future, we can see mostly dry before this system comes through and possibly some more severe showers, some severe weather for the um, Great Plains region and some cooler um, winter weather on the way as well with that. Um, overall, we are mostly above average for this time of year. Um, we're just experiencing some cooler trends for now. It's not going to last long. We're going to warm back up. Um, and so that's it for national weather. Well, thank you so much, Olivia. Uh, it looks like, you know, I was a big fan of the, uh, uh, was it the six to 10 day outlook? Yeah. For, for yes. next week. So we got to get through this little bit of cooler period for much of the nation, yeah. right? And then we're going to warm up dramatically after, after we just got to get cold and then we're going to warm up a little bit. You know what? I'm looking up. I'm looking forward to the warm. You got to yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't get like, up. I don't like where we're at right now. No, I, we're, want, yeah. I want the uprise right Well, we, now. it's spring, so it's the battle between, you know, summer and winter. Yeah, unfortunately. I want the summer to come. So. I know. I Thank know. you, Olivia. Coming up, spring allergies are on the rise. See what climate change might have to do with this. Again, that's after your weather now. Welcome back. The time is 8.13 and right now you're taking a live look outside the Brown Family Amphitheater and it's a little, it looks a little bit cloudy out there right now. It does, but that's one of the designated spots for the eclipse gathering that the university has offered. So it hopefully is. to see a lot of people out there Absolutely. on Monday. Absolutely. But we got to get to some bigger news right now. Uh, for the first time uh, in the U.S., women can buy birth control pills without a prescription. Uh, CVS has confirmed O-Pill is now available on its website and will be coming to retail locations later this month. It's also coming to Walmart stores and Walgreens even started selling it last month. The contraceptive started shipping at the beginning of March and it's working its way through the supply chain currently. It costs $20 per month with discounts available for buying multiple months doses at once. Opel is the first oral contraceptive approved by the Food and Drug Administration for over-the-counter use. The Food and Drug Administration is signing off on a first prescription digital treatment for depression. It's a smartphone app for people who get a diagnosis of major depressive disorder. Rejoin will be a prescription only and won't treat depression on its own, but rather is to be used in conjunction with medications. The six-week program may stimulate the areas of the brain thought to be responsible for antidepressant effects. It will consist of a series of brain training exercises. But more research is needed and these findings are just preliminary. Therefore, it is still unclear if most insurance companies will cover the cost of this treatment. The prescription app will become available later this year. 
And if you're experiencing itchy eyes and congestion, me all the time, you're not alone. Roughly one in four Americans are allergic to airborne uh, irritants such as pollen and mold. And unfortunately, that number is rising. Plus, doctors are seeing symptoms get more severe as the season extends longer than ever. A recent study published by the National Institute of Health found that for over the last 30 years, pollen seasons have started about 20 days earlier and even lasted eight days longer. There's also been a 20% more pollen produced annually. Scientists say this is likely caused by climate change. Gosh, I, you know what, thankfully, Thankfully, my, my allergies haven't kicked in a full overdrive. I feel them, though. Yeah, yeah. You know when I'm you feel it? To, yeah. I'm starting to feel it a little bit more, too. It's yeah. not, and like what it says on the story title, yeah, yeah. pollen sucks. It you does. know what? I agree because I feel the effects all the time. I do, it. too. I do, too. It's that ragweed's terrible. Yes. That's the only one I know off the top of my you know head. What? But corn, you know what's not terrible? Well. Oh, yeah, corn, corn as well. Yeah. We know it's what not terrible. Ryan Hill and his lovely weather forecast. Let's see it. Oh, thanks, guys. But I got to tell you, this, uh, ugh, this cold weather, Daniel Jack, I am completely allergic to it. Let's get it out of here. But it's going to take a little bit of a while, uh, unfortunately, at least over the next 24 hours or so. Uh, clouds held in some warmth from yesterday, 40 in Muncie and Indianapolis, respectively. Got some 30s around the area. Hot spot, if you want to call it, that is Shelbyville at 42. And we're not going to see much change in temperatures. Why? Well, look at these clouds. You can see that gray all over our map. gray -o, hopefully not all day -o. But look at all this right here. You've got even some shower chances. So uh, you get that precipitation through our area. That'll bring down the temperatures as well. There's a little dynamic cooling that happens going on with that. But take a look at this. Overview map shows that ridge of high pressure waiting in the wings for us, which is a big factor in our weekend weather and especially moving on into the week. And let's look at that, shall we? Here's our last system. Still trying to push it on out of here. Get on out of here. Boom! Right there in our evening forecast. You see that clearing. But unfortunately for us, I, that actually with those northwest winds, those light northwest winds slackening off and that clear sky, and you've still got that cool air funneling down from Canada, I've got a freeze warning to talk about. But look that Saturday. Very nice for us folks. Until we get our next chance of rain, we have a little bit of a warm frontal boundary that's going to kick through during our Sunday. We've got a concert to talk about later on in this forecast. And that rolls through, that weather rolls through unto our about our Monday morning. So how's about that freeze warning? Most of our area, Madison, Delaware, Randolph, Henry and Wayne counties all included in that freeze warning. We're going to see temperatures as high as about 29 here in Muncie, but yet going down as far as 26 in some of our outlying and northern areas. So tapering those showers out, we've got a little bit of a peak of sun possible as this system is ski daddling on out of here. It's going to clear easily more in the evening hours with that wind still going, but slackening off 10 to 15 during the day down to five. There you go. 29 clear, calm and freezing cold. Moving on to that weekend, 55 on Saturday. But then there's that rain chance with a concert, the eclipsed concert in uh, that's in, I would say it's in, I want to say, Minatrista. They might actually be moving that to Pruis. Uh, we've been watching that at the Cardinal Weather Service. But look at this absolutely bright eclipse forecast. Again, where are these stylish shades? They're going to help you. 71, but clearing. Look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. Going to be breezy on that day, though. And then moving to that seven-day forecast. Absolutely phenomenal. Look at that jump over the weekend. We hold on to mid to upper 60s throughout next week. Mm. Absolutely gorgeous. So uh, if we're allergic to cold weather, <laughs> boom, out of here. I was about to say, we, to it, team. It, yeah, it looks like it, we, we do have the cure for those allergies though, coming up next week. You know, I do have a question for you real quick. Clouds are, start, are still trending to decrease, correct? Absolutely. There we go. That ridge of high pressure bumping them out. You know awesome. what? That, that, that just makes my day right there. That does. That does. Me too. <laughs> Coming up, our Max Robson tries to cook in the kitchen, but in a different way than you expect. Interesting. But that's after your weather now.
Welcome back. As the weather continues to fluctuate this spring, some students may look to find hobbies they can enjoy in the indoors and the outdoors. Yeah, Cardinal Weather's Max Robson heads over to the rec center to find exactly that. Ball State hosts many options for average Joes like you and me. Today, we enter RC141 and are joined by Assistant Digital Content Manager and Co-President of Pickleball Club, Gavin Smith, to take a look what's inside the sport. All right, so Gavin, if you can just kind of explain the scoring to us. How does the scoring work? What do you have to do? Yeah, so with the point system, it starts off, you have three numbers in there. So you have your point system that you have, so how many points you and your teammate have in doubles. And then the second number is the amount of points your opponent has. And then that third number is how many, what server you're on. So you're either going to be number one or number two. Two, three, two. And then with the server one or two, when you stop being server one or server two? Yeah, so if you get to server two, that is your last chance to score points. If you don't score a point on that and your opponent defends the point, meaning they technically win, uh, that means you give the ball to them and it's their turn to attack, basically, and get points. And then when you end being server one, it's because they technically got a point on correct, the side. Correct, correct. They defend it, you correct. It doesn't count as a point, but they defend it, meaning it goes to the next server. And then if they defend that again, they get the ball, and then we don't get any points at all. And then it has, it's their turn to get points. So. All right, so can you explain kind of when you serve, what you have to do? Yeah, so with serves, um, I mean, pickleball is like a mix of badminton, ping pong, and tennis. So it kind of encapsulates all those sports into one, which is really interesting. But with serves, they always have to be two. underhand and then into this box that we talk about um, that you serve directly across to. So it's diagonally. You have to serve diagonally across when you're serving. Um, and it has to be in that box. I know we'll talk a little bit more about the kitchen box as well. If you hit it into the kitchen box, uh, it'll automatically count as a point to the other team. And then as well with the serves, it has to come back to you and hit the other side, your side of the court, and then you're allowed to hit it. Because if you hit it in the air, then it counts as a point for your opponent. All right, so you brought up the kitchen. What yep. exactly is the kitchen? It's kind of a weird name. Yeah, so the kitchen's kind of a weird area to explain. It's almost like a game in itself. I, I would like to say the kitchen you're in. The only way you can go into the kitchen is that the ball bounces into that area, and then you're allowed to step into there. On, on any other time, you're not allowed to step into that area um, as well. And the same thing going back into the serves. If your serve goes into the kitchen, uh, it also counts as a point to the other team because it's not inbounds of that square uh, that we were talking about earlier. Well, thank you, Gavin, for joining us with today's rendition of Inside the Sport for Absolutely. Pickleball. Absolutely, yeah. It was so fun having you coming to play for a little bit. If you ever want to come back, we're in RC141. Uh, um, we play from Tuesdays to Thursdays from 8 to 10 p.m., and it's always super fun. So, awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Max. That's lovely, isn't it? It was. You ever lovely. played pickleball? I have not, but honestly, oh, after so that good package, at it. after this package, I want to try it. All right, so yeah. I know what we're doing later today. But Absolutely. Coming up, the eclipse is just three days away, and it's got us here in the studio wondering what actually causes the eclipse. So we've got our weather forecasters in the studio to break down the science. Honestly, I'm wondering the same thing. So there you and go. That's after your weather now. Welcome back. Time is, uh, let's see if I can read a watch here, 825, 826-ish, roughly. This thing runs a little slow sometimes. Yeah, it look, but it's a nice watch, though. It's, it's a you know, watch. Hey, Timex, man, you can't go wrong. You can't, can't go, go wrong. wrong. But we are going to learn a little bit more information about the eclipse with breaking down the science. I'll send it over to Jay Lessig. Thank you very much, Jack. Thanks, guys. So yeah, I'm going to be breaking down the science behind the solar eclipse. 
So let's start off with some basic information about what exactly is an eclipse. A solar eclipse is where the moon fully or partially, depending on where you are, blocks this view of the sun. Now, totally, total solar eclipses occur only about every 18 months, so this one is a total solar eclipse. It's a big deal. Fun fact about them, they only happen during a new moon. So if you're wondering to yourself, hmm, when's the new moon? It's coming right up. And it is seen over the same point on Earth every 400 or so years. So don't sweat it if you miss this solar eclipse. You only have to wait 400 more years for the next one. Now, let's take a look at the path I have drawn of totality that goes all the way across the board here. So it should first enter the U.S. at around the Del Rio, Texas area at around 1.30 p.m. Central Time. And then the ones I want to focus on is the block here in the middle with the Indi Indiana places. Starting at around 3, just after 3 o'clock Eastern Time, it should be hitting the Evansville area before making its way to Bloomington, Indianapolis, and of course Muncie. That is going to be our area between 3 and 3.10, our few minutes of totality. And then it will continue on eastward all the way until uh, closer to 4 o'clock when it will get through Burlington, Vermont, Montreal, Quebec before heading overseas. So that is very fascinating, correct? Well, there also are some do's and don'ts that are very important when viewing the eclipse. We're going to start off with the bad, the ugly, the do not do. You do not want to look directly at the sun. This can damage your eyes, damage your vision, damage your retinas. You do not want vision loss. Next, do not drive on busy roads, busy uh, state highways, interstates within about an hour before the eclipse, uh, especially in our area where cloud cover is trending in our favor. It's going to be very busy, a lot of tourists coming in and looking at the eclipse. You want to make sure you are off the roads, don't get caught in traffic. And then the last don't I have here is do not let your children unattended viewing of the eclipse. You want to make sure you are monitoring them at all times. I know I had totality when I was a kid and uh, if my parents weren't there I probably would have stared directly at the sun. Uh, now let's look at the good stuff, the do. You want to do this. You want to use specific glasses for the eclipse. There are, they are handing them out uh, across campus and there are other locations off campus. Plenty of options to uh, obtain some glasses there. Pick out your viewing area the night before. This is important so you avoid all that traffic and you are set. You have your plan ready to go. And then lastly, be safe, have fun, and take great pictures. One last thing I'll touch on, the cloud cover. As I mentioned earlier, the trend is our friend, so it should be a great eclipse day. Back to you guys at the desk. Thank you so much, Jay. Um, look at these glasses. It looks like I'm in an 80s music video here. I, it's very fun. Again, they're handing these out at all of the dining halls here in here at uh, I know <laughs> here at Ball State. But on Monday, again, make sure you grab your eclipse glasses and maybe a raincoat. Probably not here though. Severe thunderstorms could put a damper on eclipse watching next week as parts of Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, and Louisiana could see damaging winds hail, rain, and perhaps an isolated tornado. There is a chance of violent storms could hold off until the later afternoon, just long enough for eclipse watchers to get a decent view of the phenomenon. But cloud coverage could still possibly obscure the sky. Plus, storms firing up later in the day could impact post-eclipse travel. You know, I, I just had to take the glasses off real quick to, to read that. Um, but yeah, I'll, put, I'll put them how, back on. How are we looking right now? We could be a band right now. I think we could be a we band. We could. Hey, Brian, I don't know where you are. Brian. Yeah. I'm right here. Brian, <laughs> Brian, what's it, Brian, what's the weather looking like? Well, it's the future's looking so bright, you're going to have to wear those shades. i got to tell you, let's look at that uh, eclipse forecast again. 71, clearing is the friend. The trend, that's the friend. Look at that. Going to be breezy, though, so hold on to your hats. Nonetheless, great viewing conditions are looking more and more likely. And then we kick our way through that seven-day forecast. Beautiful, beautiful after we get through a hiccup into this weekend. How's about that 60s all the way throughout Thursday? Yeah, I've seen the 60s all the way through Thursday, plus 70 on Monday. That's great. Absolutely. Bring the shorts back out. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's great. Absolutely. That's all for Cardinal Weather this Friday morning. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next week. Have a great rest of your Friday and a fantastic weekend, and enjoy the eclipse.